scientists, the supposed spirits of the dead. He says, this is, this is, this is silly. And this man had been at the seance with you. Yeah, oh yeah. And he's telling you that it's silly what you've yeah. just done. Because see, my wife, he says, goes to the seances because she gets comfort and she gets uh, something good out of it, good feeling out of it. And she lives for what the spirits are, you know, are going to see that the future is going to be like. To me, he says, I can't bother with this stuff. He says, I want power. I go right to the source of power. And he says, how do you think that I became famous the way that I am? And I said, you must have had some good luck. Well, he says, there's no such thing as good luck. He says, there's either some power working for you somewhere, or you don't get ahead in this world. Not in my, my type of occupation. So um, it, it went from there. We, went, we got talking about uh, spirit worship. Did it intrigue you? Or did it make you want to find out more about what exactly he was talking about? Yeah. So, he said, the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with are demon spirits. You're fallen angels. You're beautiful beings. Just set it out, just like Oh, that. yeah. It didn't make you uneasy when he said they were Well, it shocked you a little bit, you know. Something that you first hear uh, uh, mentioned to you. He said, uh, you guys have got a great future ahead of you. Because we've been told, the high priest of our society, secret society, has been told that the master has very special plans for you too. Now, what did he mean by the master? Uh, Satan. And uh, we were interested to hear more about it. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the f Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did they before they were cast out of heaven. He says there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing, he says, in the, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says our master was misunderstood, and God did not bear with him like he does with, with people that make mistakes today. So we're in a warfare, good against evil. And we happen to be the evil ones, but we're not that bad. He says, I look at this business between the forces of good and evil. He says, you believe in, in uh, one person believes in God, and everyone believes in Lucifer. It's like politics. So the great controversy mm -hmm. is real. And you've oh, yeah. heard someone talk about it that's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And to these people, <clears throat> they are sold to the fact that uh, Christ, will not return to this planet with power and great glory. He's going to abdicate all claims to the planet because this, the high priest once said that uh, Christ will abdicate all claims to the planet because he knows that it is lawfully and rightfully Satan's. And at, and at that time, he says, Luc uh, Lucifer, you, you, uh, you mentioned Lucifer a lot of times, but he mentioned Satan also. He says, the master, usually they, they like to talk about the master. The master will resurrect his people from the graves. Now, George is telling you all this, or the high priest? George. George. Okay, when the evening yeah. wound down, and you're putting a cap on all that, mm -hmm. you guys had consumed some alcohol. Yeah. And you, did you feel like that it was kind of a one-shot deal? You didn't know if it ever happened again? What happened? Well, that? he said, no, I said, listen, guys. He said, I, I like to have you, he says, uh, meet some of our people. But about next week, Wednesday evening, I'll pick you up at uh, your place and uh, you're invited to uh, one of our uh, services. Services? Like yeah. a church service? Yeah, something similar like that. It's a testimonial to the spirits, well, how the spirits have blessed your life. See? So, uh, when we left there, I said to myself, this guy's half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hear from him again, you know. But uh, it, it was true that uh, Wednesday night came, he was there with his big Lincoln, step in, and we went to do one of the uh, most beautiful areas of Montreal. Um, and uh, the place was a mansion. Now, a mansion is usually very large, we'll, we call this a little a small mansion. It was beautiful, most beautiful place. Yeah. Roger, 
your friend George took you and Roland to this mansion where people worshipped the demons. Mm -hmm. What was it like there? What kind of people were there? Well, it was a big surprise for me as I kind of made up my mind an idea that they were going to be rough looking characters. But as we entered the place, I was amazed to see that they were all very well dressed, well mannered, and that a lot of the people, as we were in being introduced to people, were professionals, doctors, attorneys, uh, a lot of business people. And see what they had, they had a praise session to the gods, which is the uh, spirit counselors, which are in charge of legions of, of spirits of demon spirits, and uh, they talk about what the, the Lord of their lives has done for them. Because they call on s particular spirits, uh, like uh, um, the god Nehoshta, which you read in Second King about. The is Israelites uh, worshipped the golden serpent that Moses had made. Mm -hmm. Well, behind, behind the spirit worship, they, behind that, they were worshipping the serpent. They were actually worshipping uh, this uh, spirit Nehoshta. And the same spirit Nehoshta is the priest was telling us that the medical doctor that was telling us how he was making operations that had never been made before because people had to be uh, awake, they have no have no no feeling. He was able to, uh, you know, carry on the surgeries that had not been done before. Mm -hmm. But the spirits would give that capacity to be able to uh, operate without people feeling uh, any pain and things. And also without uh, no problem with the, with the blood because as he would cut his incision, because his incisions, everything open and with no blood running. Mm -hmm. So you, you could do the work that has not been done before. So. Now I recall reading in your book that at this um, praise worship service they had, they would sing hymns. Why would they sing hymns in a demon worship? Yeah, um, this was kind of a big surprise to me when, I, when that took place. The priest said, hey, let's go down to the worship room of the gods and uh, have a uh, praise session, you know, a singing session. So we go down there, and what did they think? You think did they pass around church hymnals, you know, Christian church hymnals? And I couldn't believe this. I said, "What's his business?" So the priest says, "Well, now he says for those of you that are new, <laughs> let me tell you that this is the most feasible way." He says to please the spirits, it's to deride Christ and his people, you know, and his church and all that. So they sing. Uh, uh, out of Christian uh, hymnals, they didn't sing Christian words to the hymns. However, well, they change. They change a lot of the, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not really it's good. a form of it's a form of blasphemy. Yeah. Mm. Such as you see today, in the rock music world, you see the the entertainers. They have these crosses. Mm -hmm. Ladies got earrings, crosses. Mm -hmm. The guys got the cross. This is a form of blasphemy, a, a form of deriding Christ. You see. Spirits uh, cause the people to do that, to find pleasure in wearing this type of uh, uh, emblem, which is the, the cross is the emblem of the crucifixion of Christ huh? to the Christians. Mm -hmm. So what were your impressions the first time you went down into that worship room? Well, it was, uh, we'd been there maybe a half a dozen times, and uh, the high priest uh, told us after the meeting was over, he wanted to talk to us my friend and I. So after the uh, most we had left, he says, uh, the master of my life has revealed to me that it is time for you people to become acquainted with the worship room of the gods. Well, we started to move toward a beautiful uh, um, grand staircase. Beautiful. The banister was, was huge. It was massive. And the Iron, uh, a lot iron work that they had done in it was a super. The beautiful decorations on the walls, the chandelier on the first landing. See, it was the first landing. About you go down about eight or ten steps, and you had the first landing. It was huge and beautiful. The the light arrangement was the nicest I had ever seen in my life. When we got into this this uh, sanctuary area, it wasn't very brightly lit, but everything was. Uh, well, magnified uh, the beauty of uh, certain things. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, a lot of the things were gold-plated 
are gold trims. 